Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve crash the markets again. Shiba Inu Coin News today. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. That is right. You've probably seen it. You've checked the charts and there was a market crash today. Everywhere, stocks, cryptos, market down. You may be wondering what the frick happened here? Like how, I don't get it. We were starting to have a little bit of momentum coming into the markets. How the heck did it lose all of the momentum in one day? Well, Jerome Powell, he did his famous Federal Reserve speech. Today was the day. And guess what? He said, we will continue to raise interest rates until we completely put out the fire of inflation. So yes, we already knew that some interest rate hikes were going to continue, but the strength and the actual domination that he came out with today with those words. It's so weird because it's all about the tonality of the words that he uses and the fact that he said, we will stop inflation for sure. Pretty much word for word. That means that we can now expect the Federal Reserve is not playing games going forward. They're going to rein that in. So today, we have an interesting video for you. We're going to be jumping into this information about what Jerome Powell is talking about. We'll do that during the news section. We're also going to be jumping into the charts today. We're going to look at the weekly, the daily, and the four-hour charts for Shiba Inu and see what happened there. We had a 8% correction. We will also look at the charts for Ethereum and Bitcoin, and we'll check the whole entire crypto ecosystem news here in this video. So hey, if you're new here, my name is Ryan Huggins. I'm a real estate agent and a crypto and real estate investor here in Orange County, California. And my job is to help be your crypto shortcut. If you're like most people, you don't have the opportunity to spend hours a day reading through headlines and watching YouTube videos. Well, that is what I do. And that's my job. And then I bring that news to you in a condensed fashion on this channel. So if you're looking for a crypto shortcut, make sure you smash the subscribe button. All right, so here's one of the articles we will be tapping into. This is very important information for you if you're a trader or if you're a buy and holder, does not matter. Hawkish Fed comments and Bitcoin derivatives data point to further BTC downside. And as we talked about in yesterday's, what we've been talking about for weeks, tomorrow is also the new moon. Now that doesn't really come into play with stocks. That's why the stocks, you know, that effect happened today. The new moon hits tomorrow. The new moon potentially means downside risk. And we'll show you there's an actual indicator on the charts that shows, and it has lots of historical value. But for those of you that are new, you may be wondering, what does this even mean? So when you think about this, there's hawkish and then there's dovish. Okay. So a hawkish is a bird of prey, one that comes in and just, you know, grabs what it wants and takes it and does what it needs to do. And that's how the Federal Reserve is acting right now. They continue to rise interest rates. They continue to be really strong, really tight with their money and the way that they're running the Federal Reserve, the way that they're running the world's currency right now. On the opposite end, soon, hopefully soon, the sooner the better, you'll see stuff that starts to say dovish. And if you think of a dove, they're soft and they're nice and they're 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 kind of easy, right? You, they're not a war bird like a hawkish. And that's what's going on right now. The Federal Reserve is on a war path to stop the actual inflation numbers that were continuing up. Now, we do have data that shows, and this came out last month, that the inflation number has peaked and we are starting to come down, but it's still, it's so high and so out of control and so crazy that they are not giving up. So in the long term, this is actually very positive for the entire world and for the American economy. But in the short term for us traders or long-term holders, it sucks to see the markets get crushed like this because when people, when, when the Federal Reserve is hawkish, people do not want to invest on risky assets. They don't want to invest in stocks. They don't want to invest in cryptos. They don't want to invest in houses even, right? You can even see the housing market starting to take a deep dive. I see that every day in my profession it is outstanding how many here in Orange County specifically price cuts we're getting. Homes are starting to flood the market. It's becoming more of a buyer's market. But the problem is because the Federal Reserve is hawkish, they don't even want to buy homes right now, right? So the interest rates are too high. So they're kind of, the Federal Reserve 
they're running, they're they're walking a very thin line because if they get too aggressive, then they can they can crash the economy because nobody will want to buy anything, no houses, they don't want to buy things on credit and so on. So they've got to be careful. So we'll dive deeper into this article shortly, but let's get right into the charts. All right, so here we are on the Shiba Inu daily charts. Dang, it's even dropped since we just started talking here in the intro. We're at 9.33% down. That is a huge, huge number for Shiba Inu on one single daily candle. Like if we go back to this candle, it was a 9.64. This one was six. This one was eight. This one is nine. All right. So that's a big one. So very, I mean, you look at all of these candles, very rarely do we get a 9% candle. And remember the upswing move, this one here was a 33% move. So that was huge. This one back here, which was another one of our monster moves, that was a 31% move. So we're having some correction. So the interesting thing here is with this news, and we have had this be a fake out in the past, right? So the Federal Reserve comes out and rah, they're real hard that day, that next couple of days, boom, we have an extreme drop in price in all stocks, in all cryptos and so on. But then everything gets the battle back, right? It starts to like wear off. It wasn't as bad as we thought, kind of like the hangover effect where it just goes the other way. However, this blue line, let's go ahead and jump over here and take a look at it right now. And we're going to look at the moon phases. Okay. So the moon phases is a really interesting indicator. When a full moon hits, you typically see within three to five days, some sort of spike in price. Boom. It happened over here. Full moon hits three to five days. It actually was like the next day. Boom. It hit. Okay. And then we continue. We can even go back in history. Full moon here took quite a few days, but boom, a nice spike. And the momentum has been so positive, so strong for Shiba Inu, Inu all the way since back over here when we had our ultimate bottom that probably will not be our ultimate bottom. I Like I've been talking about, there's new lower lows coming. But ever since this bottom, we've had really great momentum because you can tell with the new moon indicator, you can see before the bottom, the new moon indicator, boom, it means a down move. New moon indicator, boom, means a down move. New moon indicator, boom, down move. New, new moon boom. So we had full moons meant up, new moons been down. That's the way that the system works. However, we were showing such bullish momentum over these past couple of months. Only the full moons were giving us any movement. The new moons were literally just trading sideways, which was really interesting. However, starting tomorrow, the new moon does come out. So, I mean, depending on where you're at in the world, you could consider the new moon hitting tonight, you know, depending on where you're at. But officially on the new moon phases, it's coming out on the 27th in the U.S. So very soon we could see, you know, maybe we see a little rally back tomorrow and then we see the drop. But what I've been talking about is the potential of getting our new lower low, right? And why do we need a new lower low? Why would it be positive? Because I know a lot of people don't want to see a new lower low. And what a new lower low means, our most recent low, which is here, let's go ahead and draw a horizontal line on this, which is right here. That is our new lower low getting us to quad zero, well, it's actually five zero, it's five zero seven, let's make it exact, five zero seven one four. Let's change the setting, five zero seven one four is the exact line, okay? So if we get a little tick down below that, our RSI, you'll see here, our RSI is moving up. There is almost zero likelihood that the RSI could then get a new lower low as well, which the lower low would have to come below that level on the RSI here, okay? So this RSI would have to drop so dramatically over the next week or two to go to a new lower low that it would not give us what we've been waiting for, the ultimate signal in the market, which would be higher highs, right? So still higher numbers here on the RSI and a lower number here on price, that gives us a bullish divergence. And we've been talking about this for a very long time. If we go back to Ethereum and we're looking on the weekly and we go historically, look what happened when there was a bullish divergence, which was here. Boom, shot up. Look, even go back in history more bullish divergence here. 
That was the massive bull run. That was like the kickoff, the start of the massive bull run. Could that be the case for Shiba Inu this time around? You can see there's not even enough data to have even had a chance to have one of those. So very exciting. It is a bummer that price may be coming down there. I understand that, but it's also very exciting because this could be the signal. Everyone's talking about the bottoms in, high cycle bottom this, this, that, that, that. This is literally the signal that has been the best signal historically for any, and that is a weekly bullish divergence. So that's what we're waiting for. So that's on the macro larger scale. Let's dive deeper now. Let's jump into the smaller scale time frame. So yesterday, the video, what was it called? Yesterday's video was called Quad Zero One Four. All right. And by the way, thank you to the comment that let me know. So I got the thumbnail right, Quad Zero uh, One Four, but I accidentally put in the title Triple Zero One Four. What a blessing that would have been. That would have been like a thousand percent move, right? So in fact, let's go real quickly and let's see what that would have been. All right, so we'll grab our measurement. We'll go down here to where price is quad zero. Let's just say quad. Let's just say quad quad zero one four, which is there. If it ran all the way up to triple zero one four, boom, nine hundred percent move. So, thank you to that comment. I really do appreciate that. Sometimes when you're doing the titles and the description, and it's a lot of work, and you get a little too fast, a little too excited. And that's what happened to me yesterday. So I do appreciate you pointing that out. I really do. But as we talked about yesterday, and we this was a very, very important talk that we had yesterday, is this quad zero one four needed to break to the upside. And we needed a body, a body meaning the thick part of the candle to close above that. And you know what? It did not. All right. So the price actually pushed right up into it and then decided to reject off of it. And now you can see where we are. We have fallen. Also, we talked about this four-hour supply and demand box, how important that was as well. Well, it broke down, all right? And then this morning, when we wake up, Jerome Powell starts talking his little head off, 5 a.m., and then boom, we have more of a drop. And then the next four hours, boom, boom, we just keep on dropping. This leading up to that talk was still very, very bearish, unfortunately. Now we're here on the four hour charts. You can see our 50 moving average is sloping down. Our 21 exponential moving average is sloping down. And we talked about yesterday how if price did start to drop, hopefully we could hold support at the 50. Unfortunately, it gave way. So price has come down. What is interesting though, is price has come down to the bottom of our line here, which is of our indicator called the Nadaria Watson envelope, which works very well at giving us potential tops and bottoms of the short-term market, right? So it's now down. You can see right here when it when that price exploded up yesterday at the 1 a.m. candle and it went freaking nuts, had a really, really cool takeoff. Well, it also gave us the signal, this little, you see this here, let me turn this off. You can see this little red dot, this little red dot here when that candle closed, that indicated, well, you're you're way too far out of this zone. Now that's exactly what happened down here as well. Our volatility bands, which is the blue lines, you can see those right there. Our RSI level broke way out of the volatility band. And as we always say here on this segment of the channel, what goes up fast usually comes down fast as well. So when price breaks out of the volatility band that much, it, it always will return. And then sometimes we can see continued bearish move after that. And you can see right here, once that the RSI was still positive, it has the green background. And then it flipped the signal line here and then it turned a red background indicating we did flip bearish. And then we've been bearish for several hours after that. So we may have, like I said, because this is the bottom here of the Nadaria Watson envelope, usually you have a little kickback. Look at the bottom here, we had a kickback. The bottom here, we had a kickback. So, and we were just, we were basically chilling in the middle here, had the explosion out, so it dropped. Now we're at the bottom. Maybe we see a rally going into this weekend. Now, the other problem is today's Friday and going into weekends, cryptos, crypto weekends are kind of lame usually. So we're gonna see the Nadaria Watson envelope could very likely just continue to trail down and price just trickle, 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 nice and slow this weekend. We'll see what happens. Taking a look here at the one hour, 
that's exactly what's kind of happening here, right? So price came down closer to the bottom of that envelope, and then it's just kind of trickling down, and it is still sloping down. Maybe we have a little curve up here. You can see it tried to bounce, tried to bounce. But now, going back to another video from last week, which was the most important video of the week, was the quad 013. And if you guys remember, we talked about how price needed to break above that quad 013. And when it did, it really went. And that was back here. So this was that resistance, resistance, resistance. It finally made the explosion above right here. Uh, that was on August 13th. Boom, it rode up. And then it obviously came back down to reality. Then it started using it as a support. As you can see here, it was really, really tug of warring here on this line. They use it as support for the launch pad, but now we've broken that again. So I'm keeping a very close eye on this quad 013 number. Is it going to be a resistance here if it starts to rally? Or could we break that, regain support, move to the upside? In the short term, there is like a glimpse of light for a rally here. Because if you see Shiba Inu now is all the way down here on the RSI at the 30 level. That is the oversold level, okay? So right now, price is oversold. Obviously, it can get pretty deep down there, especially on this one-hour time frame. But a lot of times when it gets down here at the bottom, it's oversold. It's also right in the bottom of our volatility band. We may see a, a, a little short-term relief rally on these slower, lower time frames. The other uh, negative thing we have here, though, volatility band sloping down, the average of price in the uh, RSI sloping down, and so that's looking pretty negative there. Let's turn back to market cipher. Also looking very bearish. Everything has now crossed under. We have the 21 crossing the 50. So pretty negative outlook for Shiba Inu in this short time. The only thing that's positive is the fact that it has hit the very bottom of the Nadari Watson envelope on the one hour and also the four hour. Let's look here on the daily. There's not enough data to do the daily. We also have this looming zone here, our supply and demand zone, quad zero, one, two, four, eight. This is our daily supply and demand zone. It has not quite reached it. The last time it hit was here, August 20th. Now we're just waiting for it to come here on, or sorry, yeah, come here on to 26th, right? So the 26th, is it going to continue this drop? Now we're starting to slowly reverse to the upside here over the last couple of minutes, as you can see on the 15 minute time frame, it's getting a little bit of a relief. All right, so let's see where is everything going then, right? So again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is just me using the charts and what is given to us through TradingView to figure out where price could be going. So let's go ahead and remove this daily supply and demand zone for a second, because we don't need that. And let's go with the Daria Watson out of the way. So we do have a lot of mess going on here. So one, we have this long-term trend line. So let's go on the daily and we go back and look at this trend line here. So this trend line, which has been with us all the way back since February, February 9th, it came up and hit it again here in March, came back hit it here in April, our extreme supreme scream drop. Now we've had a battle back up. It actually broke to the outside. Okay, so this is the good news. Price broke to the outside of that, creating a support level on this trend line. But now, let's jump to the weekly. We've had another gnarly day to the downside, bringing us right on to the actual support line. So is it going to hold or is it going to break? We will find out very soon. You can see it's starting to make its drop there. It's also going to be intersecting with the 50 moving average on the daily and that trend line at the same exact time. So if it holds support there and does a rally, that would be great. If not, we could see continued droppage. Let's go to the four-hour charts on the Heikinashi, see where price could be going. Okay, so our most recent lowest candle is this guy here. Right there to there. And this is going to be red because it's a four hour. And this red box is no longer valid because we dropped below it. 
So you may be asking like, what, what are you talking about? So this candle had the lowest wick, okay? And that is the candle in question. Now we don't highlight just that candle because we can't see the wicks. We wanna be able to see the actual wick there as well, but just know that's the candle in question. So that is still holding a bottom line support for us, which is good. And that is currently sitting at quad zero one, two, four, nine, quad zero one, two, four, nine. So if for some reason that breaks, well, then we have to go back into more historical data and we need to find where price could be going from there. Conversely to that, if we go to the upside, this is the last green candle before this down move that is currently happening. And we go there and that's our upside potential resistance level here of quad zero one three seven four. So now we have our downside, we have our upside. The only problem that I see here on this downside is that we're already in the box. So you may be thinking, well, can't we get a little clearer on that? Yes, we can. So we're gonna drop down to the one hour charts and we're going to find the one hour chart that comes to the very lowest candle, which is this guy here. That one is there and there. So that's this candle specifically, that's the top and bottom, the wicks to wicks. So we'll highlight that there. And we do blue for the one hour supply and demand zone. So we can take a look at this here. You can see it is still holding support inside of that. So let's go ahead and jump to the Japanese candlesticks. You can see it did. So here's the box, right? So it did break into the box. It's been acting as a stiff resistance now. We have this drop. So are we going to see the continued drop of price to the bottom of this one hour supply and demand box all the way down here at quad zero one two five zero? After that, where do we go? We go back into history here. And in order to do that one, we're going to go ahead and do a daily supply and demand candle get us a better idea. All right, so our next daily supply and demand candle is this one here, which we did see that we have not really reached yet. And then after that, let's go a little deeper here because we've already done that one. Let's go here. And then that one's gonna be yellow. So I mean, right now price is kind of just in this no man's land. It doesn't know what it wants to do. All right, so it's in a one hour supply and demand zone. We have a downside daily supply and demand zone here of the quad zero one, two, one, six, and then a quad zero one, seven, seven, nine. So that's where we're hoping to save support there. We have upside move. If first and foremost, we need to break to the upside, we need to get into the quad zero one, three zone and take that over as a support again like we were writing support here. And then really ultimately for a bullish momentum move, we need to break above that quad zero one four. So that's our outlook. What we're looking for, the ultimate low is down below five zero seven one four. So if we can get to there, we would have a new low. Let's jump to Ethereum and take a look at what happened to Ethereum. So Ethereum did what we talked about yesterday. And so Ethereum was sitting up here and it was on this daily candle yesterday. It was bouncing off of our one hour supply and demand zone acting as a resistance. And it was trading inside of this really nice wedge that we were talking about, right? Unfortunately, price did break outside of that wedge. It tested it, broke again. It had this magnificent run up to retest that trend line again before the ultimate breakdown. And now we're all the way down at our daily supply and demand zone. So we can now get rid of this one. We can get rid of this one and we can get rid of this one because we are now tapping off this support, which has been a very, very epic support in the past. And this brings us all the way back in time to here, which this daily supply and demand zone started with us all the way back on July. So let me show you here. Hi, Ganashi's. There we go. So is this last red candle before the up move? That's where we're at right here. It is currently acting as a support. Now, that is great, but if it breaks there and goes inside, which as you can see, it is currently lower than the 50 moving average, very bearish. It obviously, it was trying to break back above the 21 yesterday, did not, rejected hard. So now this box, we're just going to move this daily supply and demand box. We do have a four-hour 
supply and demand box down here. If price continues to drop, this bearish momentum continues, we could see a drop to the $1,410 range where it will then act as a support. We can also see right here that there is room to move to the oversold position on the daily. We've got this bar sloping, 21 sloping hard. Let's go to the four hour. And if you take a look here on the four hour Heikinashi candles, we can see that this last red candle before this up move that's been happening recently on the four hour is currently acting as our support. It's gonna be red. If it breaks there, then we look to see if we continue dropping. Because as you can see, the last time this move happened, whew, I mean, historically there's all of this though, right? So it has to fight through this to get down. So if you draw this line back in history, being on the four hour time zone, you can see that this area has been a very, very important zone. Last time it didn't make it up, it dropped, right? So now it's dropping. Does it hold this support to get back up? Or could we see the waterfall effect and just continued drops? I do know that yesterday leading up to this morning's talk, there was a lot, and I mean a lot, of open interest on Bitcoin for longs. So you can see why this was probably a liquidation move as well to go clear out all of those. And we do also have a bit of a pattern forming here. So if you want to do this, we got here, 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 right? So like a, let's delete that now. Looks like a head and shoulders pattern. Just this awkward double shoulder though. Yeah, not going to use it. It's all good, but it there. I mean, we're still showing lots and lots of bearish momentum. There's moves to be had to the downside. Looking at Bitcoin, see what we've got going on over here. So on the daily charts, we're on Heikinashi now. And as we can see, this was the last red candle before all of this up move. That is currently where price is sitting. It did have a quick dip outside of that. Dipped its little toe. Boop. Jumped back in there, but as you can see, it it's breaking it now. So over this next little bit here, and you can see on the 15 minutes charts, it is rejecting a lot off there. So we may see a continued drop. Four hour rejected off of it as well. So where do we go to the downside then? Our next downside move gets us to here. That would be the 20,358. So that one's invalid. Let's go ahead and do a four hour supply and demand zone here. Price is currently sitting in this candle. Four hours red. So we do yellow for the daily, blue for the hourly, and then red for the four hour, just to make it easy to remember. You can use whatever colors you want. But as you can see, it came just to the bottom of that. It's acting as a support for this moment, that four-hour supply and demand zone here. Price breaks there. Boom, we could see it tap back on that 20,000. And then let's go find a lower number inside of that box. Because that's, that's a very, very large range. So let's delete that. We'll go with a, another downside range of the red candles. So we have this one. And in fact, look at this candle. We'll use this one. That one's pretty large. Actually, let's just use the bottom before any of these up moves. Because otherwise we have this candle, this candle, this candle, this. Let's go. If price gets dirty and gets nasty, where could price be going to the downside, right? That's what we really want to know anyway. So if price breaks this four-hour supply and demand zone, as you saw, there are a little bit of interference zones on the way down here. But... Ultimately, it could be getting us back to 19,573. Conversely, we go to the upside. We can see that our 25,236 level is still the level that needs to break to the upside. If we had a little bit of a, a relief rally, we could come back to this candle here. 
and that's that 23,300 level. Let's go look at the news. So this says here, the BTC and stocks sold off after comments from the Federal Reserve reemphasized the Fed's commitment to lowering high interest rates or high inflation rates. A $750 pump on August 26 took Bitcoin from 21,120 to 21,870. That was here. We had the pump. In less than two hours, however, the movement was completely erased. One candle, two candles, erased all of that. Because Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell reiterated the bank's commitment to contain inflation by tightening the economy. Following Powell's speech, BTC dropped as low as 20700 As we know right now, it's dropping below that. So we're all the way down now, 20300 And it's, oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. It's literally just bleeding right now. Look at that. Holy moly. You're watching it as I'm watching it. Oh my God, this is Bitcoin dropping like this, guys. Like this is a massive move for Bitcoin. And this this happened, this hourly candle was 2%. This one here is 1.8%. This is 1.4%. Usually for the day, Bitcoin moves like one or two or 3%. We're down 5.83%. Jump back over to Shiba Inu. It's dropping like crazy. It's trying to get to that support level. This is why you should learn how to both long and short the market. Right. Because like you could be making a bunch of money shorting the market right now. And by the way, I'm not a financial advisor. That is not financial advice. That's just facts. It's true. You can make money going up. You can make money going down. We're sitting here watching Bitcoin bleed right now, 20,287. And it is very likely going to continue dropping. Let's go back and uh, let's look at those four hour Heikinashi candles. Um, I mean, you guys get the gist of. What Jerome Powell's doing. So let's just go ahead and draw this. We'll jump back to it in a second. But so here's the next like support level. We'll come right here. That'll be at 20,047. Back to Japanese candlesticks. I mean, it's painful. Look at that. I mean, it's just bleeding like crazy. Look at what it came off of though. A bearish divergence indicator. Do you see what I'm saying? How important divergence indicators are? Like when it's a real legit RSI divergence versus price, they mean business. I mean, look at this last time. Look at bearish divergence, bearish divergence, three in a row. And then what happened? Boom, code red crash. So at Jackson Hole, right now, Powell specifically mentioned that the historical record causes cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy, which, I mean, if you're honestly hoping that the economy recovers, this is all real and true. It just hurts because we're involved and invested emotionally in the markets, right? So right after those remarks, the U.S. stock market indexes reacted negatively. S&P 500 dropping 2% within the hour. On Bitcoin chart, the infallible BART candle, a reference to the shape of BART Simpson's head, and a descriptor of BTC's up and down price action surfaced. Outside of the unpredictable technical analysis indicators, there are other indicators that pointed to Bitcoin's broader neutral to bearish sentiment. And we've been covering that because the RSIs were sloping down. Pro traders were neutral bearish to the dump. If you watched my channel, if you're not subscribed, subscribe because we knew that this was coming. Literally all we, what we did say, what we did know, if Jerome Powell says something positive, we could see a continued momentum the way it was. Like it wasn't like, boom, moonshot, we're going crazy, right? But it was continued steady, slow growth. We did say, hey, if we see there's negative news from Jerome Powell, we could crash. And we did crash. So there you go. Jumping over here to crypto panic. Let's look at the general market news uh, trending right now. Into the night, markets tremble as Powell's pain ahead. That was last night. Let's see here. Why is it doing that? That's weird. Refresh this. Market tremble as Powell warns of pain ahead. Oh, because, you know, well, the interest rate hike is coming. That's right. That's next week. So we'll find out how big of a hike they're going to do. I mean, most people think it's 0.75, which that's totally cool. But if it goes like nuts, like what is he talking about? Is he trying to get really, really aggressive? Really aggressive? Cardano reveals state of three critical indicators to trigger the long-awaited Vassal upgrade. Bit, Bit Boy has not yet dropped his lawsuit against Atozi. Hawkish Fed comments 
and Bitcoin derivatives data point to further BTC downside. We talked about that one in depth. 10% of Ethereum nodes use a web hosting service they're banned from. Uh-oh, that's not good. So that is actually very, very dangerous. We want to make sure that they're hosted properly. Otherwise, they could be attacked, and then the entire network goes down. Former SEC chair calls on U.S. to embrace crypto efficiencies before final regulations. Cardano founder reacts to Cardano being more intimate brand than IKEA, BMW, and Bitcoin. I don't know who said that. It's crypto, man. Come on. Don't be in a cult. There's XRP cult members. Look, I'm a SHIB army guy all the way, but I'm not a SHIB cult member, dude. Like, there's coins everywhere. Do your research, find out which ones you like, and then use them. Shiba Inu knocked off trying to capitalize on Elon Musk's attention. Ethereum Wells reduced Shiba Inu holdings by more than 50%. Record 200 billion SHIBs sold by investors in two massive transactions. So people are escaping. That is totally fine. You can put the price wherever you want to put it, you manipulators out there. The lower, the better for me, because I'm just going to scoop up more. That's for sure. 